I want some Mexican goddamn trace for Drink it then. No. No one. No. It. Don't make me drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy. Okay, so we'll do a we'll do an intro, really quick intro. I'm going to do it like super super sweet. Okay. So today, quick little project. Uh, something you've seen us do on the throne project. We made the little shield the staple out of a link of chain and we hung a trace hook on it. What's a trace hook I hear everyone saying? Trace hooks are essentially were a hook with a very stylized shape to them and a trace if I'm not mistaken was what a a draw horse or a shire horse would wear and essentially that trace you you hooked all the farm implements onto it and then the the poor kind of um, dray horse or draw horse would kind of like um, you know, pull a plough across the field. So the hooks were very stylized in shape and you've seen that, but how do we make them? There are already some YouTube videos, some very good YouTube videos out there about how to technically make a proper trace hook. We're not kind of really in that market at the moment and I'm not a good enough blacksmith. So we're gonna put a link up here to a great video. This is a trace hook out of 5 8 round bar. The crux of the operation is getting enough material upset into the bar to be able to punch this eye without thinning these side walls too much. And really that is where I drew my inspiration from. I sat and watched that video over and over again and I basically came in here and I practiced and practiced and practiced. Uh, so let's cut to the chase, let's get the forge on, let's do a little bit of forging, let's make a trace hook. Cut to the chase or cut to the trace? Oh cut to the trace! You f***ing Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Oh. oh. I want some mix of goddamn trace hook. Okay. <laughs> um, so, raw materials, everybody peeps. This is half inch mild steel bar. Don't know if it's cold rolled or hot rolled. I don't even care actually. It's mild steel, half inch round bar. What I like to do is measure off an eight inch section. Bosh, bosh, bosh. Mark it up. You ready? Go. Set it off. Get this out of the way. Woof. Okay, what's next? Put a light chamfer on each end. I like to use a flap disc. Here we go. Now, Whoa. so what's my record? Fourteen or thirteen heats? No, it's fifteen, which is appalling. So, yeah. So essentially when I've made these before, I've just marked on here how many heats it's taken. And it takes 15 trips back and forth from the forge to make one of these. That's a hideous amount and it just shows what a poor blacksmith I am. But I kind of think, you know, practice makes perfect. And uh, at the end of the day, it's not I'm not in competition with anyone, you know. So um, maybe that'll change. Right, so first job, take our hammer, get ready, uh, and let's go. So we kind of tip that there and we just put one, two, three, I'm going there again, whoops, there again. Oh. 
Oh. Okay, so there we go. Do you want to just come in? Yeah. Yeah. Back in. So essentially what we've done is taken that rod and we've put four facets, square facets in it to try and pull down, start the taper almost. So I've been told, for God's sake don't watch me for kind of blacksmithing tips, but this is how I make a trace hook, so I'll try and give you the information that I understand as part of the process. Um, yeah, so back in the forge, so this is heat number two that we're going to be working on in a minute. Okay, so one heat. started at 8 inches, we've already drawn that out to nearly 9 inches. So that is heat 2. 2 heats. 2 heats. Dos caliente. Oh. Dos caliente. You're so learned. I know. I'm bloody wasted here, Mark. <laughs> I'll tell you what though, I'm suffering from blacksmith's lag, you know. Blacksmith's lag? Blacksmith's lag, I've run out of energy. Have you? What I need is I need some sort of carpentry product, possibly. Dirty Shed Power Juice, have you had yours today? Oh! oh. Whoa! Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow! It's really got that Powerade taste. <laughs> Let's forge. Okay, whoa. Come on, goddammit. Where are we now? Look at that. So we are over nine inches long. Do you sometimes wish you were over nine inches long? Well, now you can be with Dirty Shed Dirty Juice. Give me that. Oh, give me that sweet juice. <laughs> ah, that's really filthy. <laughs> you gotta mark your heat off. Oh yeah, I forgot, I was so energized. Ooh. I'm gonna blacksmith some stuff. I think we've probably got the length <laughs> in this next heat. <laughs> oh, dirty juice. Hmm. Is it worn off already? Yeah, it's worn off. It's quite quick, actually. Yeah. Look at that. 10 inch, yeah, we've got our length. Douche. Okay. Number five. Did you get that? Yeah. Good, good. Don't know what I have to do it again. I'm already a little bit tired. So now what the idea is, we use a slightly smaller hammer, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw that taper back into the round now. So this heat will be both sides working it, straightening it up afterwards. Um, yeah. This will Now. 
So we will increase in length doing this because we are pushing more metal around. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where we finish up. I'm pretty sure I've made a mistake fundamentally in that I usually start with a 7 inch section of steel, not an 8 inch. So this trace hook might end up being quite big. So we'll see. I think we could go with that now. So yeah. got something of a taper. I'm not going to straighten this out of this well, yes I am. So there we go. What are we now? Look at that. Just over 10 inch. At this point, I think what we'll do is we swap it around the porch. So this monster trace up that we're making. Yep. Should we give it away? What? Is that where you're punching your hole? Yeah. So what do we need to do next? Well, we talked, um, we talked kind of really early on in our kind of Q&As, probably our first or second Q&As about um, automotive coil spring and making kind of chisels, punches, all sorts. You know, I find bits of old automotive coil springs from suspension setups on cars on the road out there. I bring them into the workshop, I hammer them into a chisel. You know, the chisel sits there, you know, the chisel sits there, that's made out of coil spring. Um, I'll then make a tool out of it and all of a sudden what was a scrappy piece of rubbish is now a tool that I use kind of, you know, in the workshop, not on a daily basis, but you know, on a weekly basis. Brilliant, and it's free. So we use this to start the um, eye in our hook. So um, this is a tool that you've made? A tool that we've made out of like basically scrap, automotive coil spring. Um, so it's a really good quality spring. It's a bit of a turd to harden actually. You have to kind of experiment with it quite a lot. And what I find out is even though these are kind of a, you know, really good quality tool steel, they do wear out quite quickly. Just a sec. That was another heat, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. So we're at eight heats so far. Offer that up like so. Just make sure we're something light. We're losing this heat quite badly. Okay. So there you go. We just start that eye there. Got it. Okay. Nine. Ten heats. Oh, I'm gonna run out of battery. Okay, well, great place to stop. Is it? Well, yeah. I mean, let me change the battery then. Yeah. See you later. Cool. And we're back. Right. So next um, is we're just gonna use this again. It's automotive coil spring, just formed into not quite a point or a cone. Just makes it easier to go into that kind of like oval hole that we've already punched through the steel. Why do we punch and not drill? We save so much steel doing that, so we leave lots of steel in the part rather than drilling it all away. So, 
we're going to drift out our eye. So pop that there over the bing bang bong hole and drift that to as near as damn it, half inch. Take that and bosh that through and then just a quick little tidy up. There we go. Yay! Bit of heat still in there. Yeah. So, what do we do now, Uncle Al? We stick it back in the forge. 11 heats. So this is my favourite bit, I love this bit. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just get our little... Are you using another anvil? Yeah, because it's got a sharper taper on there. That one isn't quite there. Bring this out here. This gets a bit awkward. Oh, okay. All right, we'll get that heated up again. Tidy it up. That's our 12 feet. Okay. 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 You've gone to the bigger anvil. Yeah, and I don't know if it's... I'm trying to... Well, that'll do for me at this point. Let's have a look. Well, if you could do a perfect circle, you'd be a lunatic. Or is it a maniac? I don't know. Probably both. <laughs> <laughs> because we are making trace hooks, which essentially we want to be, we want them all to be kind of, to some degree, uniform. Um, I made this little jig. And essentially what this is, is I handmade um, a trace hook that I was really happy with the shape of. And then what we did is use that trace hook to kind of forge these little pieces. And essentially what we do is we wrap the trace hook around that. You know, as you've seen in the last piece of furniture we made, they're, they're not quite identical, but again, these are meant to be handmade. We're not making proper trace hooks here that would, you know, drag a plow. We're making something that looks, you know, we're trying to kind of hark back to it. I think we mentioned it in the Q&A we did outside the cave. Handmade stuff always has a little flourish. And I think that's missing from a lot of modern fixtures. And it's those little flourishes that really lift those items above the garbage that we kind of have settled for today. You know, a machine made, stamped out, pressed hook or a handmade hook are two very different things. And, you know, you see a lot of those in antique shops. And, you know, of course, that always the price tags attached to them. It's that attention to detail. It's those little flares in those trace hooks. You know, we could just take a piece of bar and just bend it into a hook shape, but it isn't gonna have any of the class of this. Maybe, you know, 50 years down the line, someone will think, you know, those trace hooks were made, you know, 200 years ago. Who knows? 300 years ago. Who knows? And that's what we're trying to do, really, isn't it? We're trying to create, I suppose, the image of ancientness. Ancientness? Antiquity? The image of antiquity? Yeah. Or a feeling of antiquity? A feeling of atavistic... Oh, oh, oh pensive. A, a feeling of atavistic connection. Look that up. <laughs> you crazy fool. Where have all my crazies gone? <laughs> Two Tom Watson. <laughs> Work quickly. Work quickly. Not smartly. So usually something like that. Oh. Can be a turd of a thing to do this. <clears throat> Usually have to take two heats on this. I think I haven't made one of these for quite a while. Oh, oh. <laughs> or maybe don't show that. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> or maybe don't show that. Oh. There's always a dropsy. There is always one. Okay. 
Okay, so got a bit of straightening to do, but on the whole our shape's there so we can work with that. Marker, 14 feet. Haven't made one of those for kind of a couple of months, so 16 heats is looking like where we're going to be. That's pathetic in terms of making those. I bet there's blacksmiths out there that could probably make one of these in, oh, I dread to think, five or six heats. So I'm a far less efficient blacksmith in terms of, you know, that efficiency drive of kind of making things. You know, I'm twice as bad as a good, as a good blacksmith. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, uh, so we're just going to kind of chew that up, a little bit more work on the anvil. And um, we'll get a finish on it, a wire brush finish, and done. So, almost there. So That's this like... is going to be a unique piece then, because it's longer than all your others. Yeah, it is, yeah. So even more reason to write us a comment. Yeah. A unique yeah. piece of dirty shed memorabilia. Yeah. Straight from the dirty shed to your front door via a postman. And Z, you want to be part of the British Postal Service or at the receiving end of the British Postal Service? Stick a comment below. Why not try and win a trace hook for you and your family this Christmas? Don't be the family without a trace hook. Leave a comment below. Thank you. This bad boy here. Okay, back to the vines. a good sound effect. It is, isn't it? Turn off the forge, save my pressures to the gas. Okay, quick wire brush. Oh. So there you go, you've seen how we make our trace hook, 16 heats, that is something to be ashamed of really. Um, I mean, you know, I think I'm going to open myself up for all sorts of kind of comments there about people about wasteful use of gas, you know, etc, etc, but you know, out there have a go, you know, it's going to probably take you 20 heats to make your first one or 30 heats, but you know, I need to work on that and I need to shave that down to like I, I don't know what. But there you go, trace hook. Uh, yeah, it, you know, it doesn't serve any kind of like, you know, mechanical purpose, but it looks great. Now, a very important message from our sponsor, Power Juice, the carpenter's friend. Dirty Shed Cola, it's filthy. <coughs>